When you look in the mirror, are you always happy with the person looking you in the eye? When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Or more importantly, when other people look at you, who do they see? Are you the person that you want them to see? When people look at you, do they see Jesus? Do they see a family resemblance? You are a child of God. Do you look more like Him over time? We are all on a journey, and because of Jesus, we know where it ends. But as you look at the path you've been on for the past year, the past five years, the past ten years or more, do you see that you have made progress toward that goal besides just passing the time? Do you feel like you're still in the same place as you've been for a long time? Does your path to spiritual growth look more like a clover leaf than forward progress, always back where you started, and never getting very far? What if you could actually make progress toward that goal, and even be able to see the mile markers along the way as evidence of your progress? That's why we developed journey groups. How do journey groups work? Journey groups are small groups that meet where you want, when you want. Is Sunday morning just not a good time for you? No problem. Would you rather meet in the comfort of your own or someone else's home, or at the park, or at a restaurant? No problem. Journey groups are designed to work around your schedule and in a place where you will be comfortable. Even shut-ins and those who are hospitalized for several days, weeks, or months can participate in journey groups. They focus on spiritual growth, not just Bible study. When you attend your journey group, you will leave every time as a different person, constantly growing in noticeable ways. You will make and strengthen great friendships with people who will be there for you in good times and bad, not just once a week. When you are part of a journey group, you will never be forgotten or slip through the cracks. And over time, you will make more and more great friends that you can look forward to seeing on Sunday morning or at other church events or other times in the community. Each training session begins with a discussion of what you read over the past week. All participants will agree on a reading schedule and read a portion of scripture in between sessions at home. Groups will then ask a few practical questions to discuss how they were able to grow closer to God through that reading. Next, the leader will present the training topic for the week, which can take a variety of forms, from reading a practical article to watching a video clip. Afterward, the group will discuss how to train other people, including other Christians, their children, non-Christians, and other Christians who disagree with what we believe. They will be given practical answers to life's difficult questions. Next, members of the group will get a chance to share how they worshipped over the past week, not just on Sunday morning, but ways that they were able to worship God through service to their families, co-workers, or others. This is a chance to celebrate the opportunities we have to show others God's love and goodness. After that comes a time of confession and forgiveness. Participants will look at a handful of questions and think about the past week. They will have a chance to confess their sin to each other and lift the burden of guilt from their consciences. And then, because God has made us all priests or mediators, we have the opportunity to pronounce forgiveness to each other. Obviously, these groups will agree to complete confidentiality of everything discussed. But in the process, you can expect to find freedom over time from any of the sins that have plagued you for so long. And even those you continue to struggle with will be met not with guilt, but forgiveness and a fresh start every time. Next comes a time of strategy. Looking at how the training that you have received will change your life from the moment you leave that day onward. The group will also plan service activities together for the church and community, using opportunities that sound exciting to the members of the group using the gifts of the group members, instead of being told what to do. They finish by sharing their concerns with each other and praying for each other's burdens, and then discussing whom they can invite to the next journey group session. What does a journey group look like? Each journey group begins with three people. Unlike most Bible study groups, journey groups are gender specific. Each group will either be all men or all women. Let's face it, especially if you're going to be confessing sins to each other, you'll be a whole lot more comfortable when it's just the guys or just the ladies. This way, 
you also don't have to worry that your spouses are getting a little too friendly with that other person in their journey group. The powerful friendships you'll develop in these groups are so strong, it just wouldn't be appropriate to have that tight of a friendship with someone of the opposite sex that you're not married to. We've also committed to helping groups stay in touch with each other throughout the week, not just once a week. We're serious about developing a deep sense of community because that's what God wants for His people. Journey groups are designed to multiply. Once a group reaches six members, it's time to become two groups to allow for greater growth while keeping the flexibility and personal nature of the group. Members keep their friendships, but the makeup of the group will change over time, all for the glory of the Kingdom of God. Picture this. If we start out with ten groups, and members of each group of three make a conscious effort to invite friends, family, and co-workers to their journey groups. Each group should easily be able to add three more members over the course of 26 sessions or six months. That takes us to 20 groups in six months, since each group will become two groups when it reaches six members. So in a year, we will have 40 groups, then 80 in 18 months, and 160 groups in just two years. With three people in each group, that's 480 people in journey groups in only two years. If we continue at that rate, after three years, we'll have 2,560 groups, or 7,680 people. And that is based on each group member on average finding one new person for each group every six months. Even if the group members can only find one new person every year, that still means almost 8,000 people, but in six years instead of three. Even if we see only one-tenth of that once a year adding, that's still 768 people in journey groups growing and serving together. And as we see that growth, nobody will be just a number in the crowd. Every one of those people will have many close friends in the congregation that they will look forward to seeing each week in worship, and the friendships will be great friendships as opposed to the shallow friendships that are so common in our society. So while you might not know every person in church on Sunday, there will be plenty of people that you do know, who know you, and who really honestly care about you. In order to make the multiplication possible, we are committed to providing leadership training for all group leaders and those leaders will be trained to find new leaders within their groups and train them, so as the groups multiply, we will see our leaders grow in their leadership abilities, the number of leaders, and their relationship with Jesus Christ at the same time. Every journey group will be different, not only because of the differences in personality, but because the groups will decide how much time they want to spend on each section, what parts of the Bible they want to read during the week, which training topics they would like to grow in, and more. We encourage groups to include food, either bringing snacks, meeting for dinner, or meeting in the corner of a coffee shop. Think about the people you respect, people of integrity and wisdom, people that make you think, I wish I could be like that, or I hope my children grow up to be like that person. What if, instead of just wishing, you really could be like that person? What if you could be more and more the person that you want your children to grow up to be like? Journey groups are designed to make that what if a reality in your life. And as you become more and more that person that you strive to be, you will find your children will become more and more like that person as well. And even better, that person is Jesus. God put us here to connect people in our community to Christ's love through compassionate kindness. That's what journey groups were designed to do. When we live as disciples, we can't help but make disciples. And the more people see Jesus in our lives, the more they will see Him as Savior and Lord.